Good morning, everyone. Uh, in this work, I will be presenting a universal CNN that can jointly tackle low and mid and high level vision problems. And uh, we will be describing how this can be trained uh, only while using uh, diverse data sets and limited memory. So when you're looking at a scene, there's a flow of information coming to you. And then the question is, what do you get out of that? Uh, so when you're describing what you're doing to your uh, non-vision friends, most likely you're saying, I'm finding objects in images like pedestrians, cars, and so on, so that then a car that is autonomous will not drive over them. But we know that there are many other tasks. Uh, for instance, we have uh, semantic segmentation, where we want to uh, actually get this response at the level of individual pixels, rather than have one response for the whole, uh, uh, for the whole box. We have uh, uh, semantic boundary detection, where we want to find the, object, the boundaries between those different instances. We might as well want to go beyond that and find the uh, parts of our objects that are present in our sense. And um, let's say find the, the head, the torso, the limbs, and the different parts of our humans. But then there are also many other tasks that are not uh, necessarily tied to a particular object. For instance, we have surface normal estimation, where we are getting uh, geometric properties of their underlying scene, namely the orientations of objects, which may help us walk around in a scene, manipulate objects, and so on. Or we have silence estimation, where without being fixed to a particular object, we're finding out what is uh, salient in an image and what we should be attending to. Boundary detection, where we're finding where uh, the boundaries between different regions are there without being tied to a particular object. Uh, so this is not intended to be an exhaustive list of uh, vision tasks, but practically a sample of the broad spectrum of uh, the tasks that uh, relate to vision. And even though everyone has his own preference about what uh, the most important task in computer vision is, I guess we all agree that all of those show up in one way or another when we try to help have vision systems that are uh, performing in the wild and doing a diverse set of tasks. So the uh, purpose of this work is to enable the training of a single CNN that can solve all of these tasks jointly with one unified architecture. Uh, so the architecture itself is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's uh, practically saying we'll take our image, we construct an image pyramid out of that, so we have our observations at multiple resolutions. Uh, then uh, each of those images is passed uh, through uh, a, a, a set of networks with tight weights. So in all of the results in this work, I'm relying on the VGG uh, network. So this is giving us a feature hierarchy. And then we have uh, task-specific parameters, which take these intermediate representations and somehow modify them so as to give the task-specific responses, whether that is object detection, semantic segmentation, or any other of the tasks that we're trying to solve. Uh, so all of this architecture is trained end-to-end -end so as to jointly optimize the uh, performance across all of those tasks. So now that by itself is not uh, necessarily the, uh, the new aspect here. So multitask training has been used for uh, quite a few years now in the context of CNN. So there's a, a thread of works on this topic. And the idea is practically the same. You're saying, I'll take the image, pass it through a network that has a shared common trunk. And then I have task-specific branches which, which give me the task-specific responses. Then you're comparing this to the ground truth and back propagating the signal source to improve performance. Uh, so that's something that is very uh, uh, tropical these days. But what is new here and what is making the problem challenging and interesting is the breadth of tasks we're trying to solve. So we're going all the way from high level, like object detection, down to low level, like boundary detection. Uh, so this would enable our uh, vision system to tackle a very broad range of tasks. So this would make it like a Swiss knife if you want for vision. Uh, but this uh, causes some new challenges. Firstly, we have no single data set for all of these tasks, so we practically need to unite uh, potentially incoherent and diverse data sets. And the other thing is a very practical concern, namely that we cannot fit everything in uh, our GPU's memory with the current hardware limitations. Uh, so these are the main uh, two roadblocks that we're removing in this work. Uh, so for the very first problem, just to motivate this, we are, when we're working on high-level tasks, we have Pascal or Coco, or we have a set of high-level tasks coming with annotations, whether that is detection, semantic segmentation, part segmentation, or uh, other such object-specific tasks. But for low-level tasks, we need to turn to other data sets. Uh, so for boundaries, we typically have the Berkeley segmentation data set. For silence, we have the MSRA uh, data set or other data sets used in uh, that sub-community. 
And for normal estimation, we need to have depth sensors which capture uh, the uh, geometry of the underlying scene. So practically, we cannot really uh, have all of our uh, tasks coming with joint annotations across all images. So we somehow need to live with it. Uh, so one thing one could do would be to alternatively train over the different tasks and then say, first I'll train on this task and then fine tune on the other. But then this is not guaranteeing that we're jointly optimizing performance. So instead in this work, what we're doing is that we're having a, a procedure where every image is presented to the network and we have annotation for one among the many tasks that the network can tackle. And what is happening is that we're back propagating on the loss of that particular task exclusively. So what we're realizing is that we're dynamically constructing a graph for our, uh, for our network, so the remaining task-specific branches become irrelevant. And then in another image where we have the boundary detection supervision, we have effectively only a subgraph of the original network, and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're repeating, we're interleaving practically tasks when training our network uh, on an example-by-example basis. Uh, so now, one thing that we observe is that there is a certain asymmetry. Uh, so there's a divide between the shared uh, network parameters and the task-specific parameters, uh, which makes it tricky to define uh, the minibat size. So after how many images should we be updating the network parameters if we're doing stochastic gradient descent? So there's a, a certain uh, discrepancy. So uh, we observe that the shared CNN trunk gets gradient signals for every single image, so it gets an update per a training sample, while the uh, task-specific branches may obtain, obtain their gradients much more sparsely when that particular sample happens to have a supervision signal for the task. So that's one complicating aspect. And the other thing is that um, the shared CNN trunk is supposed to be, uh, to be serving all tasks, so we practically need to make many constraints uh, uh, satisfied while the uh, task-specific uh, uh, subgraph is serving only one task, so it can do its inner job more, 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 more quickly. So this suggests that we somehow decouple how we update parameters for the different uh, uh, layers. So the shared layers are observing, uh, gradient, are getting gradient signals in every, uh, for every image, but actually need to gather more uh, uh, estimates of the gradient to make sure they're not uh, a moving target for all of the tasks while the task-specific layers uh, get gradients more sparsely but can get updated more quickly because they have a much more uh, uh, precise task to solve. So this leads to a decoupled uh, sim for updating the parameters, which uh, actually frees us from the concept of a mini batch, but actually uh, allows any layer to determine uh, by its own where it is updating its parameters. I'm not going into the details of the algorithm, so I will be happy to present that on the poster. But the bottom line is that this is what allows us to put all of those diverse data sets and train our network end-to-end -end jointly across all tasks. Uh, the second challenge is that as soon as we start uh, increasing the number of, uh, of tasks that we're solving with our network, uh, we very quickly run out of uh, GPU memory, even when uh, we feed only one image to our GPU, if we want to have high-resolution images. Uh, so one solution that we could uh, adopt if money is not an issue is to buy a larger GPU, so we can buy a 24 uh, gigabyte GPU, uh, which is uh, uh, saving us for the moment. But then as we introduce more tasks, or if we want to do high resolution analysis, we will again uh, run out of memory. So we very quickly uh, 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 hit this problem again. So what we're proposing here is an algorithm that is actually uh, independent of the number of tasks uh, in terms of its memory complexity. So this allows us to load all of the tasks uh, in a single uh, GPU and still uh, not increase the memory complexity as the tasks increase. To see how this is done, we need to look a bit into how backpropagation works. So in the forward pass, uh, we're computing the activations of uh, all of the intermediate neurons, and we're storing them in memory. And the reason why this is done is that this is used in the backward pass in order to combine the activations with the uh, gradient signals and then get the gradient signal to the layer below. below. Uh, so this results in a complex that is linear in the depth of the network. Uh, so what we're doing here instead uh, is that we're relying on an idea that was recently introduced for uh, low memory backpropagation where we're saying that we won't be storing all of the activations, but actually uh, throw away a big part of the activations and only keep a subset of anchor points. And then uh, what we're doing is that we're doing mini back propagations. 
So we have a network of DEP3 in here, which is doing its own backward pass. And then once this is done, we eliminate uh, the neurons of the last part of the network. And then we're running another mini uh, backpropagation on network of DEP3 and yet another mini backpropagation of DEP3. So this gives the exact estimate of the gradient, so there's no approximation. And the only thing that is happening is that we're doing the forward pass twice rather than just once. So we're trading off uh, memory with uh, computational, uh, computational time. But what we get in this way is that rather than a linear uh, depth, a linear complexity in the depth of the network, we have a square root complexity. So this is making it much easier uh, to fit everything in the, in the memory. Now, if we try to do multitasking, uh, we again run out of memory because uh, the depth of the network, if we do the algorithm naively, uh, is growing uh, linearly in the number of tasks. So as we add more and more tasks, eventually we will again hit this uh, ceiling. So what we're proposing to do instead is to think a bit more closely about how we can do this memory efficient backpropagation. And what we're saying is that for the shared brand, br branch, we're doing the exact same business as before. But now for the task specific branches, we're eliminating everything that has to do with a task specific layer as soon as we're running a backprop on that. Okay, so we're no, no longer using a single topological sorting of the whole uh, layer, but actually removing memory that was allocated to task as soon as the backpropagation for the task is done. So this removes the second roadblock, which is uh, fitting many tasks in the memory and allows us to have a complex that is independent of the number of tasks. So practically we have our big network, but we only require a small GPU to train it. Okay. So this would suggest that we can put all of the tasks that we need in our uh, GPU and train end-to-end -end the current architecture. So now coming to how this works in terms of accuracy, uh, we got mixed results. So for detection, we have, uh, we're comparing to very strong baselines. For the individual tasks, uh, we get competitive performance to state-of-the-art system. So that's the faster RCN and trained on MS Coco, and that's our single task performance. When training for two related tasks, detection and semantic segmentation, we get a certain boost. But then when we're training across all seven tasks, we get a drop in the performance that brings us a bit lower to the single task uh, performance. The same story holds for semantic segmentation. Again, we compare it to a strong baseline, deep lab uh, trained on uh, multi-scale and on COCO. So our single task performance is pretty much the same. Uh, two task performance, again, the same. But when we move to seven tasks, we get a, a, a certain drop in accuracy. And this is actually something that is to be expected. So we have many tasks that are not necessarily related. So if you think about normals and boundary and object detection, they're not really solving related tasks. So we observe that indeed uh, increasing the importance of one task can result in a drop in the performance of the other task. So that's what we got by switching the weight of the normal task substantially. So this is in a certain to be expected. What we have is something very similar to the situation where we have one person working and too many manager, managers uh, sending uh, supervision. So currently our single worker is the VGG network and we have all of those tasks having different demands from that. Uh, so what we're currently working on is the first obvious thing is to make our single worker stronger using ResNets or putting more workers in this architecture, namely have, let's say, two towers in our in our network, but there are several many more interesting research problems to be addressed, namely how do we coordinate across tasks, how do we figure out which tasks should be working together and integrate this in deep learning. So that's our uh, current research. So to conclude, uh, what we introduced was a um, universal CNN. Practically the main contribution was removing two main roadblocks, limited memory and diverse data sets. Uh, you can try the uh, test version of the system, which is already available uh, on GitHub. And you can see what this gives when you go back home and try this on, uh, this, on the streets of your hometown. Uh, thank you for your attention.